Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so this will be the first of a few videos that I'll be posting on this website and you'll be able to follow the links on uh, D2L. Um, and then we'll try to get you guys all set up for the test uh, coming up hopefully next week. Um, it should go very smoothly. If you've done, I've already posted a Kahoot on D2L so you can follow that link and do that as many times as you want. Um, so we're gonna get going here and uh, hopefully you enjoy this. If there's any questions or feedback about the videos, please by all means uh, send me an email or uh, post a comment, uh, that'd be great. All right, okay, so uh, now that we are up and rolling, um, I wanna make sure uh, you guys grab a uh, pen and a piece of paper, um, just something to jot some notes down because we'll be doing a little bit of exercises maybe through this. Uh, it also may help from a studying perspective to make things going. So um, if you want to pause the video right now for a quick second and then go grab a pen and paper, uh, we'll wait. Okay, so now you're back. Um, that's fantastic. Um, so one of the few things I want to help you, I like, you know, I'm always big on acronyms um, and helping things uh, allow you to remind you easier down the road. Um, so I want you to write down, grab a, your, your pen, um, and just write down um, your favorite toothpaste. Think about it. Okay, good. So the toothpaste I've been using for a lot of time is Crest. Um, Crest, I've used it for years, um, but the coolest thing is that it actually ties into uh, helping us remember our acronym for all the environmental forces that in fact, in, uh, sorry, affect marketing, um, and we're going to be looking at those today. Okay. Okay, so uh, here's, uh, like I mentioned about my favorite toothpaste is being Crest, um, but it's a really cool acronym to help remember. So as you can see, uh, you got uh, C-R-E-S-T, which is just the Crest, um, but it's always hard to figure out what's, well, what are we going to use the D? How are we going to remember the D? Well, you know, my first name is Derek. So dear, so it's Crest Derek, so Crest D, um, that'll help you remember the acronym for the rest of the uh, semester, because we'll be focusing on that, and those are all the forces that apply and affect marketing, and we'll get into specifics. But today we're gonna talk about the most important one, uh, which is a D, which is me, um, which actually ties into demographics, and we'll talk about that. But first, I'll just quickly show you the pinwheel of all the uh, forces that we'll be doing uh, over the next uh, rest of the semester online. And uh, once we get that going through, we'll talk about uh, in specifics uh, certain things with regards to demographics, okay? So here are the forces that we're gonna be looking at on this pinwheel. Um, you can see there's demographic, competitive, technological, economic, one of my favorite ones, it's kind of crazy what's going on right now in the world, uh, regulatory and social cultural ones. Um, we'll be talking more specifically as we get through uh, the rest of these videos. But today I wanna focus on demographic. Now I'm guessing most of you have have some inkling about demographics. You've heard about Generation X and Generation Y. And I want you to take a few seconds now and think of anyone right now uh, or a demographic that is being affected by this COVID um, pandemic that's going on right now. So take two seconds and write it down. Okay, so if you said baby boomers, you would be right. Obviously, baby boomers uh, are getting older, and they're the ones that are getting affected more. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, demographics uh, and a little bit more about um, the challenges and where it kind of comes from with regards to understanding it. It used to be really applicable uh, going back years when we looked at different marketing techniques, when we looked at how we used to use TV. Not that we don't use it, but we're definitely fading away from it. Uh, newspapers, um, billboards, all those things that you probably don't watch um, or see those advertisements anymore. You generally probably see them. Uh, your parents are probably generally the ones that get targeted um, on those um, avenues with regards to the marketing. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit more about um, specific issues with regards to demographics um, and the challenges that happen today, um, especially that tie into technological forces as well. But uh, we're gonna focus on the demographics ones, okay? So let's look at baby boomers a little more detail and kind of just understand what's happening with the Canadian population as there's a lot that's going on. Um, and I just want to quickly look at the stats. The stats we're looking at here 
are actually from 2006. So you can imagine how these numbers are probably escalated a little bit more. But if you look at these numbers, what do you conclude by looking at the stats where the population from 55 to 65 is almost over 25%? Right, if you said that a lot of the, most of the population is aging, that would be something that we as a marketing team would need to know that. Why? Because we want to market products to them. And if you think about who those people are, they're more likely either older brothers or sisters, um, really older brothers and sisters, uh, your parents possibly, grandparents, uh, great grandparents, all those could kind of fall into this category. So if you think about that, you got to need, to, we need to know where are these people? Where do we find this demographic? Um, do we put them on social media? Because that's the first answer everyone goes to. Let's put them on social media. Well, that's great. Um, but where on social media are they? Are they on uh, LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Snapchat? Where are they? So take two seconds now and write down where you think this demographic would be. And if you said Facebook, you would be correct. Um, now, that being said, it is changing a little bit more. You'll find more and more, but I'm sure all of you I've had your parents, or you get that phone call, your grandparents asking you, hey, little Johnny, can you tell me I'm kind of lot, how do I post photos of you when you're little on Facebook, right? Absolutely. So it's really un un important to understand that going today's, and actually they just announced that some um, companies, because of this COVID, are getting rid of the newsprint. So some of the flyers uh, from the grocery stores said, absolutely, that's it, we're done. Um, if you don't have uh, social media, or online or a computer of some sort or a mobile phone, a smartphone, um, unfortunately you won't get an advertisement for our store, um, which really is a changing move now because at, at currently at this time, what they've been doing, they've been balancing it, right? A little bit of social media, a little bit of um, online advertisement and also newsprint in the local papers. So right now they said, that's it, we're done. Um, so I think you'll see more and more jumping on that bandwagon and, that, and that, that'll be it. So it'll be a big turning point um, from as far as hard copy print um, being used as a form of a marketing tool uh, in the future for a lot of businesses, okay? So let's look at more specifically, you know, more about your grandparents and your parents um, and why it's so important that we really want to market towards those. Because you may be like, oh, why would we want to do that? So let's look at that. So. Let's look a little further, like we mentioned. Uh, so the aging population, right? Your parents, I mean, everyone's aging, but the people that are getting up there. Um, and unfortunately, these are people being affected by uh, the virus going around. But let's look at that. So people be 50 plus and older control 75% of the Canadian household net worth. What does that mean? What does net worth mean? Right, so it's actual money that is in the household. So they are the ones in the household that have the money. Think for yourself. I'm sure you don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of disposable income that you can go out and buy new computers and lighting and all these social media tools that you need to be streaming online. You don't have that. Um, your parents, uh, your grandparents are the ones that have the money. So if you think about it, a part of it is marketing companies want to address and market toward products towards people that have the money, right? It would be pointless to advertise to a demographic that doesn't have a whole lot of income because they can't spend, so they add no value to the business. So understanding that the stat, and it's actually gone up quite a bit, um, it's important that we reach out to these people. And like I said, it's a big turning point now that they're getting rid of those hard copies uh, of print that everyone still um, gets those newspapers about, right? Um, actually, I saw it the other day that people were still, I saw a delivery boy going around handing out papers, uh, delivering papers to houses, and I thought it was crazy. I thought, really, during this time, uh, that they are boys and girls are still doing that as a newspaper route, um, and it really is it worth it. So, anyways, this is where the key point is, um, addressing that if these guys are the, pe the demographic that has all the money, then we need to be looking at products, services, um, that we could uh, target towards this demographic, okay? So, let's look at them. Uh, some of the other uh, demographics or categories um, that marketing companies have used. In this slide, uh, we've talked about baby boomers. It's important to kind of help understand, you know, the age groups. So the easy one, the member of the baby boomers, and we'll kind of keep that as a simple target because I think uh, that adds value um, to history and when we're understanding marketing and how it's worked over the years. Um, but it's definitely doing an about face. Um, and 
we'll talk about that uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, but these, you remember, from remember the years. Um, if you look at the years, um, if you look real close, 1946 and 1964, the easy way to remember this is to just flip the numbers, right? 46, 64, 64, 46, 64, 46, right? So you'll remember that um, on a test. I don't know, call me crazy, might show up on a test. That 1946 uh, goes to 1964 because the numbers are inverted, okay? So when we're talking, I wanted to also start taking this moment to talk about uh, all the different categories. So to make life easy for marketing companies, they came up and said, look, oh, you know, instead of saying, you know those people that live in the Toronto, oh, you know those people that live in Whippy, you know those people that live in Ajax, um, it became very hard uh, and confusing to people to understand. Well, what does that mean? So what marketing companies did uh, years ago is they thought, you know what, let's make it simple. Let's just categorize or profile certain groups of people so it makes it easier for us to kind of move forward from a marketing standpoint, which is fantastic, um, as long as it kind of makes sense. So we look at baby boomers, 1946, and you think about that for the most part, they're kind of the same. You know, they've worked at probably in their lifetime, two, three, four jobs max, um, very diverse, very loyal to brands, um, that sort of thing. Um, but the next few generations, I'm going to skip through real quick um, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, the other ones. And I don't want to talk about that because I want to move forward past it. Uh, because I want to focus on marketing in the technological age and what we're facing these days. But there's a few others that we're going to bring up next, okay? So here we have Generation X. Uh, we hear that all the time. Um, lots of people talking and blaming them about what's going on and everything else. Um, but yeah, Generation X, again, a marketing company has made it easier to kind of look at them and uh, what age group they are, okay? So here we have Generation Y. Um, and they were born between 1978 to 1994. So I also want to keep in mind is that depending on what textbook you read, these numbers are going to change, plus or minus a couple of years. So it just gives it, don't hold it too much to the years exactly, uh, because depending on the books, the Baby Boomers and Generation X is pretty concrete as far as the years. Uh, but when you start reading into textbooks uh, and, and different online resources, you'll find these numbers will change a little bit. Um, again, basically just enforcing the fact that they're just guidelines um, that marketing companies have used, okay? So what do you think comes after Generation Y? And if you said Generation Z, you'd be correct. Um, again, so 1992 uh, to 2010, right? So again, marketing companies saying things are getting a little crazy, so they're kind of figuring out, okay, what do we do with all these generations? It's, it's so hard to market it to people because there's so many diverse uh, cultures coming into the, uh, into the Canadian market. Um, this is just one avenue that we maybe would help us a little bit easier, help define who Generation Z is um, and what needs and what they require. All right, so the last one we're going to talk about is Millennials. And you guys kind of fall under that category, depending, again, on which marketing company uh, or what textbook you read. Um, but I think we're kind of, in, in my personal feeling, I think this is where we all are. And I think the days of categorizing um, demographics is kind of going to have to go by the wayside a little bit. And then we'll explain that more uh, in the next couple of weeks. But anyways, um, what are some rumors? Take a few seconds, uh, pause the video, uh, and write down some of the rumors or when people hear of millennials, what comes to mind. All right, so take a second and do that. All right, so if you use, wrote down words like self-entitled, lazy, can multitask, um, don't get outside enough, always on their computers, um, all about the environment, you would be correct. Um, but those are some of the challenges that face when you start tying it in. Because if you notice, um, there are some years here, but it really, when you watch this video, um, which unfortunately I can't put on here because it doesn't, uh, I can't figure that out technologically wise right yet. Um, but if you go on D2L, there's a link to this video, which ties into the assignment that is due this week. Um, so please watch the video and, and comment on it. Um, and with regards to uh, the assignment, just you know a short little paragraph explaining what they're trying to discuss, all right? All right, so that's all the, the um, categories that I want to discuss. There are a couple others that, depending on which marketing company you look at or which textbook you look at, um, that kind of content take it on to the next level. Um, but I don't want to focus too much on it because I think that's the challenge um, that a lot of marketing companies are going forward. They really use um, these categories um, to really help forward their, um, their marketing strategy. Uh, 
and I think um, they're getting a little sidetracked. I don't think you can wait so much onto uh, these categories as you did in the past. All right, so let's look at a few other forces that tie into demographics. Okay, so ethnic diversity. I think it's safe to say that if you look around the Toronto or Ontario or across Canada, ethnic diversity drives our economy. Um, and it's really important to understand that. Why? Well, visible minorities make up 50% of the population in large urban areas like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal. So it's important to understand that because we want to address or market products to um, this demographic. So how do we do that? How do you think we can kind of communicate to uh, this demographic? Well, if you look at certain restaurants that are opening up, right? If you think about what types of foods are available at the grocery stores, right? You see these um, companies trying to get their attention uh, so that they feel more at home, regardless of when, uh, whatever country they may have immigrated from, um, that it really makes them feel more at home uh, and, and buy their products and feel like they're a Canadian uh, once they get their citizenship and everything's all cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is an important factor. So I think it's important to understand when we do that, um, you got to address that in your products, depending on what their values are when they're coming from other countries, uh, which helps drive our economy. So it's important. You can't leave or ignore this because this is definitely something that's growing massively. I mean, if you look at the colleges now, the amount of uh, international students coming over uh, into Canada, uh, the college and at the university level is absolutely outstanding. Um, it's actually driving our economy and it's fantastic to see that we have such a strong economy and I think it'll help uh, get us through this uh, this little challenge of virus that we're going through right now and hopefully we get through it really soon. But anyways, um, that's a huge thing to think about um, depending on your product or service that you're working on your current project, okay? Okay, so last but not least, uh, I want to talk about non-traditional families. Why, uh, and first of all, does anyone recognize this video clip? If you actually download the PowerPoint, you can actually watch the entire video clip. But if you know the name of this TV show, anyone? Modern Family, absolutely. I mean, it's been around for years and many awards. Um, but why, I want you guys to think about why was it so successful? Take a second, pause the video, think about, write down your paper, why you think this video was so successful. It's sorry, that's the video, but this, um, this TV show was so successful. So if you said that it could relate to everybody at different levels, absolutely, right? Um, people tend to watch things or do things that they can relate to, right? If you think about the things, videos that you watch on YouTube uh, or um, things, uh, movies on Netflix, it shows and things that you can relate to. This was so successful because of what large demographic, it, it spread it all across Canada. Think of all the characters in this TV show, right? they all had some connection to someone or you or someone tied into it in some way, right? I don't think there's one class I've sat through where not one person didn't, uh, hasn't watched this show. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I mean, it's not, because it's, I think it's into repeats now. I think the last season was this year, um, but you should absolutely watch it and, and, and really see the connection how marketing companies made it so successful. Um, and, and think um, that going forward, uh, it's really um, important to understand that touching on all the different cultures, uh, lifestyles uh, that are happening in the world today and in Canada, um, it can't be ignored and you need to address it accordingly. All right, so that's it for uh, demographic forces. Um, hopefully it shines your light a little bit more than it is just the typical age, gender, income, uh, all those that generally fall under that category. Um, but it goes a lot deeper to really understand the importance of it. I mean, if you're looking at the forces that are going to apply to your product or service, 99.9999% of the forces, demographics is absolutely going to be one of them, right? If you think about it, for sure, has to be. So you need to understand them a little bit further. And I want you to rethink your project. Which one is this? Okay, Which demographic force? Is it Generation X? Is it Baby Boomers? Is it Millennials? Um, talk about the challenges. I mean, I think a lot of you on your project you're looking towards millennials, um, if not gender, baby boomers, like the, the, the spectrum, right? Everyone that's currently now, um, and baby boomers in Generation X, um, the past, but the middle is kind of, gets all kind of gray, but it's easy to focus on the extremes. But I want you to really think about, is it addressing all the issues and concerns that that demographic has um, that may come up? All right, so good luck, and we'll see you next week.